Howdy. There is something going on on the Reykjans Ridge somewhere here. There has been some quakes recently. One hour ago, 5.7. Two hours ago, 5.2. And the smaller one, which is very hard to catch and click. Two hours ago, 4.8. Needless to say that these structures could be volcanoes. There's one here. Also needless to say that there are probably many more volcanoes in the sea submerged than we have on land. So the monitoring of those is very difficult. And if they are submerged under enough water you probably won't notice anything on the surface there has happened some earthquake in switzerland as well here it's very interesting i don't know if you have seen it already let's just zoom in very very closely that you can see three hours ago 2.1 66 kilometers in depth the only user report was like nothing felt or whatsoever. There are water veins all over the place. And also sources, as we can see, they just emerge out of somewhere. Just somewhere in the field. But I found something. Let's zoom out a little bit. I think it was this one. Yes. 1.2, 15 kilometers in depth. A minor earthquake. Probably no one would care about this. But I think it's always interesting to watch them up, see what's there. And we might have to go to Google Earth. I just want to point out before we go over to Google Earth that we are on top of a mountain. So that's on Google Earth, the location of the quake. And it looks rather interesting. There aren't too many pictures of this very specific region here, of this mountain. But there was somewhere here beside it, some interesting structure. It is not the thing I really wanted to show you. Yeah, this here. I don't really know what to make out of it. There are these two lines and it seems that there are some perpendicular features in that. I think this could be this kind of drainage path. And they were building some stuff there in order to slow down the water. But I don't know. I have no idea because the pixelation is really bad. So it's rather hard to see like really what's there. But this is just continues like uphill. There are like these darker features as well, whatever they are. Maybe shadows, maybe boulders, maybe something else. There seems to be a house and we have these brighter spots here. And there are also these kind of features all over the place. Sometimes they are made by cows. <laughs> yes, because they are walking back and forth on the hillside and they tend to use the same paths 
I haven't found any cows here. Maybe they are too small. Didn't fit into the pixel. I don't know. Maybe it isn't the season for the cows. Fall or spring, nothing to eat. It could also be that this mountain is moving. Growing. And such. But we don't know. So now let's check out this interesting feature I found. I think we have to go in. Yes, there it is. Not only if we follow this hill. Now let's go back. That's the quake position. And north is somewhere here. So we aren't set straight northwards. Bortelspitze. Bortelspitze. Check it out. Very beautiful. Ain't it beautiful? We have red rocks. We have almost greenish rocks. We have very blue water. And it looks like a caldera. From this point of view, it even more looks like a caldera. And we have this gravel fields. With those rather same sized boulders. Which might be an indication that some strong electromagnetic forces were separating those. Or winds. Damn. Pleresspitze. They have rather strange names there. Rabenkopf. But the thing is, over here, on the other side of the valley, that's the same valley. Actually, now I just saw these. Check them out. Very nice tetrahedrons. Stack triangles. But now let's go over to the other side of the of the valley. Because there is this. Now we are watching straight from above. We have lakes. At least four. Which are rather easily visible. The thing is, this is Lake Saldura. Lago means lake. And it, in a way, it doesn't really look like a lake. You know? I don't know. It's not very inviting to take a bath or going swimming there, but it's called a lake. Lago di Saldura. And my Italian is rather bad, but I thought this could be... This could be something which has to do with salt. So I was checking out if I could find anything about this lake. I couldn't find anything. So I tried to figure out about the word Saldura. And I ended up in Utah. Salduro is a ghost town located in Toeli County, Utah, United States. Description. The name Salduro is a combination of Spanish words, sal, and duro, and means hard, hard salt. The settlement was located on the geologically significant Salduro Salt Marsh also known as the Bonneville Salt Flats. Bonneville Speedway is located approximately one mile north of Salduro. 
Salduro formed next to the Western Pacific Railroad, which was completed in the early 1900s. Significant salt beds were identified during the construction of the railroad, and several mining claims soon followed. After several years of unprofitable attempts to produce salt, the claims were leased by <coughs> the Capel Salt Company, which erected a small mill near Salduro. hard salt. So we have to assume that there is a salt environment. This could explain why there isn't anything growing really there. It is very, very interesting looking because there are like very interesting features all over the place. let alone all these lakes. There isn't any snow there or whatsoever. They're like higher up are these glaciers. There's another lake here. There are many of those. And there is, seems to be also like this kind of water, waterfall. There's another one here. I know most people say that, yeah, that's just melting water or rain and snow and all this kind of stuff. But for example, this small lake, uh, it's really hard to believe. And look how many there are. There's another one here. And this looks rather deep. And what I also find interesting is like these little icy patches. I think there is also water pouring out of the ground and through certain chemical reactions. Let's say like that all chemical reactions are electric in nature. Ions exchange charge differentials and such things. They are probably attracting the cold, so to say. And we have this kind of cracks here. There, here is one and there is another one down here, which also looks very interesting. I don't think that anyone dragged some excavator up there and dug this out in order to get some profit. Yeah, it's just, it's crack, you know. It's a crack in the mountain and it could go really, really, really deep. Maybe all through the whole mountain. All the way down. Let's show, let, let me show you a few, some pictures before I quit it for this time. Look at that. I didn't knew that there are these kind of things in the Alps. <laughs> you know? That's amazing. That's really amazing. You can almost like see how it got burned in the process of creation. And that's one of the pictures. Now let's just look at that. I think there's quite some chips and Maybe in the water, it looks like in the Adriatic Sea or what's over Greece. Where we have limestone and stuff. That's why the water has the color. And do, here we have this kind of yellow, greenish stuff. And I was thinking, is it possible that there are some sulfur deposit, deposits there? I don't know. This is amazing. 
I, for me, that's a very, very cool find. And I think there are 100% natural occurrences, these lakes. These are untamed. There is a salt flat or however you want to call it. And this is coming down from here somewhere. There's a connection up. Like there's probably another salt flat. I don't know. Water veins coming from higher up from the still frozen glaciers. Now let's just follow this up. Maybe we find something still. No. Totally boring. Nothing to see here. <laughs> yes. I think I leave it here. This could continue endlessly because every time you zoom in somewhere you find something very interesting. Could anyone explain to me how this kind of sediment depositions could be achieved by a glacier? How? How could a glacier do this? No way. Yeah, I think we went over the crest. We are on the other side now. And water is pouring out of the mountain. Down the valley. Alto Piano de la Zaun. Dorbiera Bassa. 2425 meters above sea level. And there is some red stuff there in the back. Check it out. Cows. Finally. The red stuff could be iron. Maybe this is finally the explanation why Smith's Swiss milk and Swiss chocolate is so special since the cows are eating in special places. <laughs> I don't know. And also this feature is very beautiful. This might or might not be a glacier. There are these things called rock glaciers, which is basically an ice body buried, buried under gravel. A water vein. One water body, another water body, and they have a different color. How comes? Yeah, this just goes on and on and on. Yes, I think I leave it here. I just wanted to show you this Upise. Let's watch this picture still. Yeah. Basic Upise. Swimming lake in Italy. Yeah, I think that's a rather cold place to go to swim. I wouldn't go. <laughs> Yeah, quite possible that some shockwave cracked these two apart. Yeah. Dogs. Piles. 
more dogs. Three thousand one hundred seventy five meters above sea level. Yeah, I think that's all very interesting. More dogs. So this seems to be a place where dogs like to be. <laughs> or however you want to call it. Now let's just have a look at the clouds there in the background, how they are hugging the mountain. Maybe they are emerging out of the mountain because there's a very small possibility, but there is still a possibility that there is like hydrogen coming out of the mountain and it combines with oxygen and we get water, hence clouds. But this is just still under investigation. Thanks. Bye.